Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Middle-Earth Lore. In today's video, we are going to answer one of the most intriguing questions that fans have been debating for decades. Could Gandalf, the Grey Wizard, defeat Smaug, the mighty dragon of Erebor? This is a hypothetical scenario that never happened in the books or the movies, but it is fun to imagine what would happen if these two powerful beings clashed in an epic showdown. Who would win? Who would lose? And what would be the consequences for Middle-earth? Let's find out. To answer this question, we need to first understand the background and the nature of both Gandalf and Smaug. Gandalf, whose real name is Olorin, is one of the Maya, a race of divine spirits who serve the Valar, the gods of Middle-earth. He was sent by the Valar to help the free peoples of Middle-earth against the Dark Lord Sauron, who was also a Maya. Gandalf took the form of an old man and was known as one of the Astari, or the Wizards, along with Saruman, Radagast and the two Blue Wizards. Gandalf was the leader of the Astari and was given the Ring of Fire, Narya, by Círadan the Shipwright. Gandalf was wise, compassionate and courageous, but he also had a hidden power that he rarely used unless it was absolutely necessary. Smaug, on the other hand, was one of the last great dragons of Middle-earth, and the most fearsome of them all. He was a fire drake, a breed of dragons that could breathe fire and fly. He was also very intelligent, cunning and greedy. He came from the Withered Heath, a region in the far north of Middle-earth, where many dragons lived. In the year 2770 of the Third Age, he attacked the Lonely Mountain, the kingdom of the dwarves of Durin's folk, and drove them out of their ancestral home. He then claimed the vast treasure of the dwarves, including the Arkenstone, the most precious jewel of the mountain. He slept on his hoard for almost two centuries, until a company of dwarves led by Thorin Oakenshield along with Bilbo Baggins, the Hobbit, and Gandalf, the Wizard, came to reclaim their homeland. Gandalf and Smaug never met face to face in the books or the movies, but they did have some indirect interactions. Gandalf was the one who arranged the quest of the Dwarves, and he also helped them escape from the goblins and the wargs in the Misty Mountains. He also gave Bilbo the idea of using a secret door to enter the mountain, and he warned him not to awaken the dragon. Gandalf also knew that Smaug was a potential threat to the whole of Middle-earth, especially if he joined forces with Sauron. He tried to persuade the White Council, a group of the wisest and most powerful beings in Middle-earth, to attack Dol Guldur, the fortress of Sauron in Mirkwood, and to draw Smaug out of the mountain. However, Saruman, the head of the White Council, opposed this plan and delayed the action until it was too late. Smaug, meanwhile, was aware of Gandalf's existence and his role in the quest of the dwarves. He sensed his presence when he flew over the camp of the dwarves and Bilbo near the mountain. He also recognized his voice when he spoke to Bilbo inside the mountain and he mocked him for being a meddler and a fool. He also knew that Gandalf was a servant of the Valor and he despised them for creating the world and its rules. He also suspected that Gandalf had a hidden agenda and that he was not interested in the treasure of the mountain, but in something else. Now that we have established the background and the encounter of Gandalf and Smaug, let's compare their strengths and weaknesses and see how they would fare in a direct confrontation. We will use four criteria to evaluate them. Physical, magical, mental and moral. Physical. Physically, Smaug has a clear advantage over Gandalf. He is much larger, stronger, and faster than the old man. He can fly, breathe fire, and crush his enemies with his claws, teeth, and tail. He also has a thick armor of scales that protects him from most weapons, except for a small patch on his chest that was exposed by a thrush. Gandalf, on the other hand, is limited by his human form, and he cannot match Smaug's physical prowess. He can only use his staff, his sword Glamdring and his horse Shadowfax to fight. He also has to rely on his allies, such as the Eagles, the Dwarves and the Men of Dale to help him against the dragon. Magical. Magically, Gandalf has a slight edge over Smaug. He is a Maya and he has access to a higher and more ancient power than the dragon. 
He can use his staff to cast spells, such as creating light, fire and smoke, breaking bridges, opening doors and controlling animals. He can also use his ring Naria to inspire courage and hope in his friends and to resist fear and despair in his enemies. He can also communicate telepathically and see things that are hidden or far away. Smaug, however, is not without magic of his own. He can use his fire to melt stone and metal and to create a blast of hot air that can knock down his foes. He can also use his voice to charm, deceive and intimidate his opponents and to plant doubt and greed in their minds. He can also sense the presence and the thoughts of others and he can see in the dark. Mental. Mentally, Gandalf and Smaug are evenly matched. They are both very intelligent, cunning and knowledgeable. They have lived for a long time and they have seen many things in Middle-earth. They are also well versed in the lore, the history and the languages of the world. They can both devise clever plans and anticipate the moves of their enemies. They can also adapt to changing situations and improvise when needed. However, they also have some flaws in their mental faculties. Gandalf can sometimes be forgetful, careless or overconfident and he can make mistakes or miscalculations. Smaug can also be arrogant, greedy or paranoid and he can be distracted or enraged by insults or challenges. Morale. Morally, Gandalf has a significant advantage over Smaug. He is a good and noble being who fights for the cause of justice, freedom and peace. He cares for the welfare of the free peoples of Middle-earth and he is willing to sacrifice himself for them. He is also humble, wise and compassionate and he respects the dignity and the diversity of life. Smaug, on the contrary, is an evil and wicked being who lives for the sake of his own pleasure, power and wealth. He cares nothing for the suffering of others and he is willing to destroy them for his own gain. He is also proud, cruel and ruthless and he despises the weakness and the folly of life. Now that we have compared the strengths and weaknesses of Gandalf and Smaug, let's see how they would fight in different locations and how that would affect the outcome of the battle. We will consider three possible scenarios, the Lonely Mountain, the Misty Mountains, and the Shire, the Lonely Mountain. The Lonely Mountain, or Erebor, is the home of the dwarves of Durin's folk and the lair of Smaug. It is a huge mountain, with many tunnels, chambers and halls inside. It also has a secret door on the western side that leads to the chamber of the Arkenstone. The Lonely Mountain is surrounded by the Iron Hills, the Long Lake and the Desolation of Smaug, a barren wasteland created by the Dragon's Fire. If Gandalf and Smaug fought in the Lonely Mountain, Smaug would have a clear home advantage he knows the layout of the mountain and he can use his fire to trap and burn Gandalf in the narrow passages. He can also use his treasure to lure and tempt Gandalf and to block his escape routes. Gandalf, on the other hand, would have a hard time finding and reaching Smaug and he would have to avoid the traps and pitfalls that the dragon has set. He would also have to resist the allure of the gold and the Arkenstone and he would have to deal with the dwarves who might not welcome him or trust him. Gandalf's only chance would be to use the secret door and to exploit Smaug's weak spot on his chest, as Bilbo did. However, this would require a lot of luck, stealth and timing, and it would be very risky. The Misty Mountains. The Misty Mountains, or Hitheglir, are a long range of mountains that run from north to south in the middle of Middle-earth. They are home to many creatures, such as goblins, wargs, eagles, stone giants and spiders. They also have many valleys, caves and peaks such as Rivendell, Moria, Goblin Town and Caradras. The misty mountains are often covered by clouds, mist and snow and they are prone to storms and avalanches. If Gandalf and Smaug fought in the misty mountains, the battle would be more balanced and unpredictable. Both of them would have to deal with the terrain, the weather and the other inhabitants of the mountains. Smaug would have more space to fly and breathe fire, but he would also have to dodge the rocks, the ice and the lightning. He would also have to face the eagles, who are the enemies of the dragons and who might ally with Gandalf. Gandalf would have more cover and alleys 
but he would also have to face the goblins, the wargs, and the speeders, who are the enemies of the wizards, and who might ally with Smaug. He would also have to use his magic more often, and to conserve his energy and resources. Gandalf's best strategy would be to use his ring Narya, and to rally the eagles, the stone giants, and the other friendly forces of the mountains, and to attack Smaug from multiple directions. Smaug's best strategy would be to use his fire and to create a large blaze that would consume the mountains and to drive away or destroy Gandalf and his allies. The Shire. The Shire is the homeland of the Hobbits, a peaceful and simple race of people who love food, drink and gardening. It is a green and fertile land with many hills, fields, rivers and woods. It also has many villages, farms and towns such as Hobbiton, Buckland and Bree. The Shire is protected by the rangers of the north and by the watchful eye of Gandalf, who often visits the hobbits and helps them with their troubles. If Gandalf and Smaug fought in the Shire, the battle would be very tragic and devastating. Smaug would have no mercy or respect for the hobbits and he would burn and plunder their homes and lands. He would also have no fear or opposition, as the hobbits have no weapons or warriors to defend themselves. Gandalf, on the other hand, would have a lot of anger and sorrow, and he would do everything in his power to protect the hobbits and to stop Smaug. He would also have a lot of support and gratitude, as the hobbits would trust him and follow him. Gandalf's only hope would be to use his magic and to summon the help of the rangers, the elves, and the other friends of the Shire, and to confront Smaug in a final showdown. Smaug's only weakness would be his arrogance and his underestimation of the hobbits and their courage and resilience. Another factor that we need to consider when answering the question of who would win in a fight between Gandalf and Smaug is their motivation and their goal. Why would they fight in the first place, and what would they hope to achieve by doing so? This would affect their behaviour and their strategy in the battle, and it would also influence the outcome and the aftermath of the fight. Gandalf's motivation and goal would be to protect Middle-earth from the threat of Smaug, and to prevent him from joining forces with Sauron. He would fight for the sake of justice, freedom and peace, and he would try to save as many lives as possible, he would also fight for the sake of the dwarves, the hobbits, and the other free peoples of Middle-earth, and he would try to help them reclaim their homes and lands. He would not fight for personal gain or glory, and he would not seek to kill or harm Smaug unless it was absolutely necessary. He would prefer to reason with him, or to persuade him to leave the mountain, or to join the side of the light. Smaug's motivation and goal would be to defend his treasure from the intrusion of Gandalf and to assert his dominance and superiority over Middle-earth. He would fight for the sake of his own pleasure, power and wealth, and he would try to destroy as many lives as possible. He would also fight for the sake of his own pride, greed and malice, and he would try to keep his home and lands and to take more from others. He would not fight for any higher or noble cause and he would not care about the consequences or the effects of his actions. He would seek to kill and harm Gandalf and anyone who stood in his way, and he would not listen to reason or to any offer or proposal. So, who would win in a fight between Gandalf and Smaug? The answer is, it depends. It depends on the circumstances, the location, the allies, and the goals of the combatants. If they fought in a fair and open battle, with no interference or distractions, Smaug would probably have the upper hand due to his physical superiority and his fiery breath. However, if they fought in a more complex and dynamic scenario, with various factors and variables, Gandalf would have a better chance due to his magical versatility and his moral support. In any case, it would be a close and fierce contest and neither of them would emerge unscathed. It would also have a huge impact on the fate of Middle-earth and the balance of power between the forces of light and darkness. What do you think? Who would win in a fight between Gandalf and Smaug? Let us know in the comments below. 
And if you liked this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more Middle-earth lore. Thank you for watching and see you next time.